So in this video, we're going to read over briefly what it says on the web page for the new Deluge public open source firmware. So this is just going to be a reference video of me reading through the list. So if you just want to read through it yourself in silence, go to the link in the description. I'm not going to be reading every single detail, only what stands out to me. There were so many features that there was no way I could cover each in the detail I want. So I'm going to be releasing these over time in a set of episodes. So here we go. First, always back up your SD card. Make sure this is backed up before you do anything. And always save. All right, general improvements. Here's a list of general improvements ordered from newest to oldest. Patch cables, increase the resolution of patch cables between mod sources and destinations. MPE, bug fix and respect to MPE zones and kit rows. Change handling of MPE expression when collapsed to a single MIDI channel. MIDI, extra MIDI ports on the USB interface for MPE. Tempo, a new option, find tempo in the runtime settings, community features menu. That switches the fine tempo and the fast tempo setting on the tempo knob. Kits, you can load synth presets into a kit rows by holding the audition pad and pressing synth. Global interface, sticky shift, so when it's enabled, tapping shift will lock it on unless another button is also pressed during the short press duration. Shift LED feedback can now be toggled manually. So mod wheel, incoming mod wheel on non-MPE synths now maps to the Y axis. Visual feedback, so changing parameter values with the gold encoders now displays a pop-up with the current value of the parameter. The menus for parameters and patch cables have also been adjusted to show the same value range as displayed with mod encoders. We can adjust the metronome volume now. Let's see, new features added. So song view features. Now we have a master compressor. We can change the row color from song view. We now have fill clips and catch notes. Next it says new grid layout. Now I'm going to be doing an episode on the new grid layout because there's a lot to explain. And we're skipping past all of that down. Next we see clip view general features. So filters, we have two new state variable filters to both high and low pass slots. And we have a new stereo chorus type added to mod effects. We have MIDI takeover mode, so it changes how CC controls are handled. It can be jump, pickup, or scale. We have alternative delay types for mod encoders, the golden knobs. We have patchable wave folding distortion. Quantized stutter. We have a grain effects. It says here it's somewhat resource intensive, so please only use one instance per song. It has a bunch of parameters. Instrument clip view. So we have new LFO shapes. We have random walk and sample and hold. We now have new LFO synchronization modes. We have triplets and dotted. Uh, we can now quantize and humanize notes. You can apply that to a single row on the clip or the entire pattern. Now we have another fill mode here and we have a new automation view and I'm gonna be doing another episode after the grid view video. Next we can set probability by a row there's a bunch of improvements to the keyboard and how it operates. A new feature renders all incoming notes consecutively as white pads with velocity as brightness. We have instrument clip view. So there's a mod matrix entry to the sound editor menu, which shows a list of all currently active modulations. We have unison stereo spread now. So the unison parts can be spread across the stereo field. We have waveform loop lock. When a sample has loop start and loop end points set, holding down loop start and tapping loop end will lock the loop points together. So on kit clip features, we have a new keyboard view. So if you press keyboard, it shows a pad grid that you can actually finger drum on and it has velocity. Next we see drum randomizer and load random samples. So you press audition and random and it will load a random sample from the same folder but it's currently limited to 25 files. It says for performance reasons. We now have manual slicing or lazy chop in the slicer view. We can now batch delete kit rows. Now audio clip view features. We can now shift the clip just like we can shift notes. Runtime settings or community features menu has all these different things that you can turn on and off. Support for sending and receiving large sysx messages has been added. So that's about it. I just read through the main features that I saw here. So stay tuned. I'll be making videos that will help show each of these features in more detail.